Hey, what's up guys? It's Ben here, and welcome back to a hands-on introduction to computer programming. This is episode one. In the last episode, episode zero, uh, we just kind of got set up with Genie and our C++ compiler and Python on Ubuntu, uh, all of the official variants of Ubuntu, and uh, uh, Fedora. So we're all set up and ready to go, uh, and ready to get started with our first lesson. Uh, in today's uh, video, we're going to be talking about the differences between a programming language and a scripting language, as well as writing our first programs, uh, compiling and running them, and then we're just briefly going to talk about uh, standards and versions. Okay, so let's jump into our first topic here, uh, programming languages versus scripting languages. Um, both a programming language and a scripting language are technically still programming, if you will. I think a more accurate term would be coding. Um, but a programming language and a scripting language are two different uh, concepts. Basically, a programming language, the, the code in a what is called a, a source file for a programming language, the code is put into a program called a compiler, and the compiler will spit out an executable application, or a traditionally called a program, and this program can be run on your computer, or you could send it to your friends and run it on their computers, and they won't have to recompile it at all. They won't even need to have the compiler installed. Uh, most of the time, they can just run it. They might especially on Linux, you might need to um, have them install a couple of uh, dependencies, so like, you know, Allegro, for example, if you're uh, doing like a 2D uh, game or something, um, but especially evident in more simplistic uh, applications, you are usually able to just distribute uh, the application itself and nothing else to your friends, and they can run it perfectly fine. Now, one limitation to a, a programming language and the output from a programming language uh, compiler is that the application that comes out, the, the output, the executable file, is only valid for the operating system that it was compiled on, or rather the operating system that it was compiled for. Uh, by default, compilers will only compile for the operating system that they are running on, but there is this thing called cross-compiling, which allows you to compile an application for a different operating system. So, for example, I'm running Ubuntu, but if I wanted to, I could cross-compile an application and it will run on Windows. Scripting is a little bit different. A scripting language, uh, the files for a scripting language are just called scripts, and scripts are put directly into an interpreter program that will go line by line and interpret while it runs uh, the application and it will not put out any output executable file or anything like that. The advantage to an, a scripting language is that nine times out of ten you can distribute your script to somebody else who has an interpreter for that scripting language, for example Python, and they will be able to run your script regardless of what operating system they are on. The disadvantage to a scripting language is that you have to make sure that they have the uh, script interpreter. So you have to make sure that they have Python, for example. Uh, otherwise, they won't be able to run your script. Now, historically, a programming language uh, was generally used to uh, create an application or more commonly a uh, operating system especially. Um, every operating system has to have a compiled uh, program in it, at least one kind of compiled program in it. Um, normally that program is written in an, uh, a programming language called assembly, which we absolutely will not be bringing up ever again in this series because it is about as raw of a programming language as you could ever possibly get. It is a nightmare to program in. If you, even if you do know what you're doing, it's still a nightmare to program in. I have not a clue how to program in assembly. Um, but it, it, most operating systems do have at least a little bit of assembly code in it, which is programming, a programming language. Scripts, on the other hand, were 
generally used to automate a task. Um, maybe it's, you know, a, a, for example, a task that was just really tedious and time consuming to do, not particularly difficult, um, although there might be like calculations, for example, there could be those in there, um, and a, a scripting language would be able to uh, do that quicker than a human could, perform those actions quicker than a human could, um, and that that's generally what a scripting language is, is used for. Okay, so let's look at an example of a scripting language and a programming language. So just go ahead and open up Genie. You should have it by now. I just moved it uh, here onto my sidebar here, my, uh, I think it's called Launcher. It's what that is, whatever. Either way, just pull it up. I switch, I'm going to switch over to the Terminal tab here. And in here, we are going to write our, our first program. Now, it's going to be a Python script. So whenever we put it into Python, it will immediately run it. Um, and Python is an incredibly simplistic, well not simplistic, but a very simple programming language, and so quite simply we can just type print, and then in parentheses, or uh, in quotes rather, hello world. That's it, that's all we need for this, this program. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that out, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in my documents folder here, I'm gonna create a new folder actually, I'm gonna name it programming. And in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a name. So in, in this case, hello. But then I'm going to put .py. That's the file extension for a Python script. And this will be especially important whenever I click save because we have this feature in Genie called syntax highlighting, which basically you tell it what programming language you're using and it will make certain words different colors so that you can stay organized and be able to easily identify if there's a typo in your code because it won't it will probably not be the color that it needs to be uh, so that's kind of a, a cool feature in almost every uh, IDE out there okay so now before we run uh, this Python code I want to write a C++ application so I'm gonna make a new file here and in here I'm going to, uh, actually I'm going to set the file type manually before I save it out because this is another way that you can uh, get the syntax highlighting um, on your, your text file here. So with your file open, go up to your menu and go to document, set file type, and in this case it's going to be a programming language and it's going to be C++ source file. Okay, and then whenever you have that set and ready to go, you're going to do a number sign. Uh, or for now, I'm, I'm going to refer to that as a pound, or a, uh, sorry, as a, a hash. So hash include, and then inside of these uh, pointy brackets, I'm going to do IO stream. Close it off, you can see it turned uh, yellow here. I'm going to go down two lines and do using namespace std and then a semicolon. Going down two more lines, I'm going to do int main, and then opening and closing parenthesis, and then I'm, uh, I'm just going to do a space, and then a opening bracket, and then uh, I'm going to go down two lines and do a closing bracket, and then inside of these brackets, uh, I'm just going to do uh, C out, and then two of the left facing pointy arrows, if you will. And then in quotes, hello world. It's, a, it's important that they are double quotes here. And I'll go over that, uh, I think, in the next episode. Then I'm going to go forward uh, one space, do two more uh, left-facing arrows, if you will. And I'm going to do end L semicolon. Go down one line and type in return zero semicolon. And now you can save it. Um, and you can see that... Genie automatically put the CPP uh, extension at the very end because we told it that it is a C++ application. But we don't want it to be named untitled, we want it to be named hello. Okay, so now we have a script and we have a source file. So the way that we run these uh, is, is going to be pretty vastly different. So coming down in my terminal, I'm going to first CD into my documents programming. 
And then if I do ls, which will just list everything in the folder, you can see I do have my hello.cpp and my hello.py. Now I'm going to run my Python script first. And the way that you do that is it's very easy. You just do Python space and then the name of the file. And I think in my case I can just hit tab. Yeah. And it will just automatically put in hello.py. Go ahead and hit enter and you can see that it says hello world. And if we look at the folder again, nothing has changed. There has not been any output because it is a scripting language. It ran the script, the hello.py, it ran only that, and it didn't spit anything else out. Now our C++ application is a little bit different. The way that we are going to run that is first we need to compile it. That's what the G++ application that we downloaded in the last episode, that's what that's for. So to compile our application here, we're going to do G++, and then we're going to do the name of the file. So in this case, hello.cpp. And then we're going to do dash o. And then we want to give it what our output file is going to be. So I'm going to put in hello. And I'm just going to hit tab and then go back one. And I'm not going to put a file extension at the end of that because it's, it's Linux. And traditionally, uh, applications don't have file extensions. If I wanted to, I could. But in this case, I'm going to keep it. Uh, relatively traditional so I'm not gonna put anything there I'm gonna go forward and at the very end I'm gonna put a dash STD which stands for standard equals C++ 11 and I'll explain what that is in just a minute here but go ahead and hit enter and then it's going to just take a quick second and then it'll come back and it'll say absolutely nothing because what it just did is it did not run the application that we just made it just compiled it and you probably want it to say nothing, otherwise that probably means there's an error in your code. Finally, to run the application that we just made, we're going to do a period and a forward slash, and then we're going to type in whatever we put after the dash O, which in this case is just hello. So I'm going to hit tab, and there it says hello. Hit enter, and we have hello world, exactly the same as our Python file. Uh, by the way, after running the uh, G++ and all of that, if we look at the directory, uh, this command spit out the the little green hello right here. And the little green uh, text color just means that uh, the file is an executable file, basically. Okay, so you're probably wondering what is with this dash std equals C++11 or the standard equals C++11. You're probably wondering what that's for. Well, basically, the answer lies with two different concepts called a standard and a version. Um, standards are for programming languages and versions are for scripting languages. Now, a programming language standard is basically a revision of the rules of a programming language because a programming language is really just a set of rules and then other people have chipped in to make a compiler that interprets all of those rules from a file and spits out an executable program. G++ is just one of many different uh, compilers out there. Um, most notably uh, like Codeblocks for example. Actually I don't think Codeblocks was a, a compiler, but you get the point. Uh, Visual Studio is is another uh, compiler. It has a comp uh, compiler built in. Um, I think Embarcadero makes a compiler. Uh, Borland uh, is a, a very popular C compiler. Um, and, and those are just a couple examples of different compilers. They're completely different programs built by completely different people, but they all serve the same purpose, to interpret the rules of C++ and to spit out an executable program. And a standard is basically just a, a change of the rules. Now, each compiler can support different versions, or, or, or sorry, different uh, standards. So G++, for example, it supports both C++ 2011 or C++ 11, and also I think it supports C++ 14 or 2014 and 98 and so on and so forth. Scripting languages, on the other hand, generally only have one uh, interpreter for them, or at very least, they usually have an official interpreter. So, for example, Python 
is the official Python interpreter. Now there are other interpreters out there, for example, uh, example um, Iron Python or Jython, blah, blah, Java and Python, blah. but uh, regardless, that is another Python interpreter. Now a version in a, a scripting language is basically a different version of the interpreter. And so, you know, if I were to write a script for Python 2, which is what I did uh, right here, this print hello world, that is only going to work in Python 2. And I'll show you here in just a minute. If I tried to run this in Python 3, it won't work because the rules of Python 3 have changed. And so the interpreter has also changed and I have to use a different interpreter if I wanted to run a Python 3 application. I can't just run Python and tell it, okay, I also want it to work in Python 3. It doesn't work that way. It has to be the Python 3 interpreter. Okay, so let me give you an example of a Python version. So over here, uh, I have a website pulled up uh, that's repl.it slash languages slash Python 3. Uh, now, I'm, I'm using this website because I did not make sure that you installed Python 3 whenever we uh, got set up because, quite frankly, you don't necessarily need it. It's just for this one example um, that I'm even using it. Um, but this is a, a pretty good website for writing out Python code online, and you can also save it and uh, share it and whatnot. It's, it's pretty good, uh, pretty good website. But right here we have specifically Python 3.5.2. So this is only going to work with Python 3 code. Now for the most part, Python 2 and Python 3 are for the most part similar. But there are quite a few essential differences and actually one of the most notable would be what we have right here. If we were to take this code right here and copy it and just paste it right in here, you can see it already tells us missing parenthesis in call to print. And if we run it, well, it's going to tell us the same thing, missing parenthesis in call to print. But we didn't get that whenever we ran it with Python 2. If we run it over here, Python hello.py, you can see it works just fine. And the reason is Python 3 is just different. There are different rules in Python 3 than with Python 2, and we can't tell Python 3 to run a Python 2 application. Now, with our C++ code, we do have to do something a, a little bit different. We actually have to quite drastically change it. So, what I'm going to do here is just type out a little bit here. This is an application that will only work in C++ 2011 because of this, this RAND function right here. And I'll talk about functions uh, in a future video, but this specifically is only a C++11 function. It only works in C++11. So if we were to run the, the G++ uh, command with the std C++11, if we just ran that, you can see it runs perfectly fine. Now if we run the actual application, it doesn't do anything because I don't tell it to, to print anything out. But if we were to omit this C++11 at the very end, and we just run it like this, you can see it gives us an error, because it's going to try to default to an older version of C++ that does not, or I should say an older standard, rather, of C++ that does not support this RAND function out of the box. So that's why I, I recommend that we already, we, we start with developing a, a habit of putting this std C++11 at the very end of the, the command because that works just fine and we're going to be working with a little bit of C++11 stuff uh, in this series so we might as well just start working with the, the standard and making the habit of compiling with the standard right now. Okay and that's it so in this in this episode you learned the difference between a programming language and a scripting language, as well as uh, the difference between standards and versions, uh, and congratulations, you wrote your first two applications, assuming you haven't written an application before. So you are effectively now, uh, I guess you could call yourself a programmer at this point, um, but there's still a lot to learn, so stay tuned. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about input and output. Basically, we're going to figure out exactly what all of this means and what all you know all of what 
one line of this means. Um, but we're going to be going over all of that. And we're also going to be talking about input and inputting variables and whatnot. And we're going to be talking about variables as well in the next episode. So stay tuned for that. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.